Um, my name is Rebecca Gregory, and I'm the Vice President, once again, of Education for Simply Organic Beauty. Super excited. I see Emily from Iowa, Ohio, excuse me, and Twisp, uh, Wyoming, all of you. Thank you. We are going to be covering so much in this Launch and Learn class today. We are now excited to bring this Paper Not Foil product distributed by Simply Organic Beauty. And I have a special guest that we'd like to welcome to our family today. So without further ado, I am going to unmute our special guest. We do have Amanda Buckingham here today. So let me unmute her and we will say hello. Hello, Amanda, how are you today? Good afternoon, I'm really good. Thank you for being here. Great, well, thank you. And welcome to our family here at Simply Organic Beauty. Thank you for having me. Yes, I know it's very early where you are. So everyone say welcome, Amanda. It's super early because she is over in New Zealand and has joined us and excited to be part of our tribe here at Simply Organic and is bringing us as the founder, um, the sort of the mother of this product line to um, Simply Organic for distribution here in North America. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I have, um, I know you're the founder of this amazing product line, but tell me a little bit more about yourself and 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 share with us all about how you found yourself in our beauty industry. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, everyone. Um, so I am a hairdresser by trade, and my husband and I have owned salons over the years, and I've also worked with um, a lot of distributors and been an educator especially within color so i've always had a passion for color and techniques and i have been hairdressing for probably about 25 years i think so a little a little while in the industry <laughs> a baby and i'm um, yeah <laughs> and i am <laughs> a mum i am a mum of three um and yeah live in new zealand which is a pretty cool place to live a long way away from you guys though <laughs> Yes, but beautiful. Yes, yes. So I, I know you've uh, won quite a bit, quite a few awards as well as um, being an educator. So I know I was lucky enough to meet you in Italy and um, be trained by you on this product line. So you definitely have a unique talent for that. Um, but I know you wanted to bring something further to our hairdressing industry because apparently there was a need for it. So tell us about the why. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I mentioned, my husband and I owned salons here in New Zealand, and we were, at the time, about eight years ago, looking to change our ways. We wanted to bring products to our clients that were more environmentally friendly, um, a little bit more natural-based, and, and just sort of take that care factor into our environment. And one particular day, I actually went through our rubbish bins. And what I was doing was trying to look at what we could reduce, what we could not use more of or recycle or just be more aware. And one of the things that jumped out at me was how much aluminium foil we were going through in, in a month or even in a week. So the rubbish bags were piling up and we were using about two kilometers a month. Um, now at the time, we had no other option but to throw it into the landfill. And even still within um, our country, there are certain areas, and I'm sure this happens all over the world, where there is no recycling process or it is mm -hmm. very difficult to, to do. So it was just one of those real at home moments where I was wrapping up my children's lunches with baking paper. And I thought to myself, hold on a second, like if this can hold liquid and, you know, sort of be heat um, induced, then maybe I could take this to work and colour here. So I actually took a, you know, lunch paper and baking paper to work and I coloured a mannequin head and it didn't work. It kind of fell apart. <laughs> but it gave me the idea to look for something like this to colour here because in my eyes I could it could possibly break down better than aluminium. Mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. contact, being an educator, I had a lot of contacts within the industry. So I tried to find something to purchase and I couldn't find anything. Not, not that was um, probably conscious in its, in, in its manufacturing right through to its disposal. So for mm -hmm. me, it was important that whatever I brought into the salon 
had a journey from manufacturing to disposal that was safer. And I couldn't find anything, like I said. So I went to our university, which is, um, they specialise in innovative products and developing products. And I told the story. And four years later, we brought paper not foil to the market. Wow. So how long has it been um, with you then? How long has it been born? So it, it's been born a, about four years ago. Okay. And of course, we started in our little market in New Zealand. And I wanted to, I guess, um, trial and error at that point to make sure that our hairdressers were happy. It was doing exactly what it was told. And, and I was gaining some sales before we looked at launching into the international market. So it's, it is a, it is paper, and what I wanted to note here, because we are going to cover this, I know, later, Amanda, but how close you are um, on that head that you're working with in this picture. And I know a lot of people that have used papers in the past that first came out, um, they had a lot of slips. So I know that was one of the questions or the concerns we had in the panel so far this morning or this afternoon. And so I know that that's something you're going to cover, but I thought that was a great picture of you showing how close you can get to scalp when needed. And yeah, so, absolutely. And so tell us um, what it's made from then, or at least start on that um, journey here with us. Yeah, cool. So again, when I was looking at developing paper, not foil, I knew it was so important as hairdressers that if we had a new product on the market that didn't perform, then, you know, it, it was never going to work. So paper, not foil is made of industrial waste so it's a byproduct of an industry that we kind of reuse so it is all the bricks and mortar and jib board and concrete and bricks and basically um, construction waste ground down into a very fine powder and reformulated with a very safe non-toxic biodegradable food resin so the product is is almost natural if, if you like to think of it that way and I know we had a question about slippage um, from mm -hmm. one of our guests. And being calcium carbonate, which is essentially what it's made of, is chalk. Mm -hmm. So if we think about chalk, you know, we watch gymnasts put chalk on their hands and it's really grippy. So it gives us the same concept that when we apply paper to the hair, mm -hmm. when we add the colour to that, it grips. So it reduces that slippage. So it's not only a paper that we know it, it's a paper that is made of new technology, which is, um, you know, a recycled agent as well as making it a lot easier for us to color. Well, how interesting that you've actually made a paper that is tree free. That's that's amazing. And that also um, I'm noting here that, you know, being made from stone, it, you're talking here about all the natural thermal properties, which was also a, a question from one of our panel um, guests today as well. Yes, correct. So being a thermal paper, essentially, it will hold the heat just like our normal foil or, or plastic would. So um, you'll retain that heat. So it won't give you any less lift or, or less um, heat coming through while colouring. And also, it's completely safe to be used with climazons or gentle heat, which I know a lot of salons like to still use. Mm -hmm. So it's completely safe to do that as well, Rebecca. Nice, without the swelling and so forth too, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And also yeah. too, remember, I think we've all been through this process where sometimes minerals and um, additives in the hair can also react with uh, tin. So mm -hmm. we, re we reduce that risk as well because there's nothing within paper that can react to our colour or to, um, you know, to, I guess, detrimental as far as, chemical reactions go. Nice. So tell us more about this next slide here where you're talking about the energy um, of producing these. Yeah, so one of the, the biggest things for me was to make sure that when we manufacture our products that we are also non-detrimental as well. So we do use 96% less production um, to produce paper not foil, but also to we don't use any water in its production. So we're not um, putting, you know, toxins into our waterways and, and, and soil, which can effectively, um, you know, damage our plant life and, and waterways. So it's, it's non-toxic, which is amazing. We also use 
solar energy to produce. So we're not using um, you know, hard energy production to make paper not foil, which of course then lowers the carbon emissions, emissions um, hugely, which is one of the benefits as well, of course. Um, yeah, so for, for me, there's also a really good point that gets brought up a lot is, is it naturally white? You know, do you bleach it? And we mm-hmm. don't. So it is acid-free, um, bleach-free, and just naturally white because it's essentially stoned. That's so interesting too. And then you're talking about how non-toxic it is to the environment, the plants, and I, some of those things you don't even think of till later, you know, as far as the solar power and the water that you mentioned making it, because those are all in production of all the other sources that we use in our salons right now. So how interesting is that? Um, and then yeah. talk about the, the, the gr- degrading part, because I thought that was super interesting when you were explaining that to me. Yeah, absolutely. So For me, the journey was, what if we got confused about how to get rid of it? You know, when we've finished our our use of paper not foil, what do we do with it? So you can have 100% faith that if you put it into your landfill, if you pop it into the commercial compost, if you recycle it or reuse it, it is non-detrimental. So all of those things you you can do to dispose of paper not foil. So of course, my number one is to reuse it. You know, these, yes. it, it's the whole point, I think, for me was to bring a product to the market that could reduce the amount of um, materials that we go through. So paper not full can be reused up to three times. Um, mm-hmm. We have a joke about this because we have a lot of salons who do use it more than that. But yeah. we also have a lot, a lot of salons that prefer to just use it once or twice. Mm-hmm. And then they know that they can safely dispose of it. Yeah. So it is completely degradable. and we have this conversation a lot about biodegradability and degradability. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason we use the word degradable is because our insects and microorganisms can't eat stone. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'd like to say that it's biodegradable because that is the word that we use, but it's not, it doesn't mean it's not degradable. So it naturally just breaks down. It mm-hmm. almost turns into a dust or a very fine powder and it completely disperses into our waterways and soil with no toxic waste or leaching or even um, what we what we sort of mention sometimes is about the the toxic gases that can be given off when Mm -hmm. something is degraded so completely safe so whether or not um, your I think your states uh, encourage your recycling or they might have a um, a commercial compost or whether you want to just keep reusing until it falls apart is is fine. How interesting. And then, of course, we can, you know, we talk about the recycling. I know some people were talking about the Green Circle um, salons uh, portion to this, and I think they do where they have the send back, but um, that's not exactly what we're talking about today because these are all opportunities for you to not only reuse this product over and over in your salon, say three times. I know we have had quite a few educators that have tested it here in North America and have used it quite a few more times, but you know, it's, it's definitely um, perfect for you reusing over and over, which we'll get to how to care for that. Um, But I thought that degradable part was very interesting as well. So plastic free and of course non-toxic and then the less energy and less waste. That's so important to all of our holistic stylists that are in our panel today. So um, here are some of the benefits you've mentioned to me in the past. And I thought you could break these down for our listeners too. Yeah, absolutely. There's a wee fact actually that um, blows me away every time I say it. And we can make 27 pieces of paper not foil with the same energy it takes to make one piece of aluminium foil. <laughs> and that's, that's crazy. pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, a, and another one that a salon in the UK actually uh, sent me a couple of weeks ago was they had been doing some marketing for their own salon, you know, just to introduce paper not foil. And they estimated that in the UK, the average salon every year produces 236 6,000 feet of foil that can either go straight into the landfill or into a recycling stream that is also, you know, can be energy um, zapping as well. So that's enough tin foil to fill the pitch of Wembley Stadium or Tiger Stadium and, and your guys' world or Michigan, I think. 
um, you know, when we look at it that way, it's a lot. So being able to reuse um, for me is the, the kind of the purpose, you know, so we're not wasting. And of course, with the great benefits that you can see on your screen, um, as I mentioned, being made of chalk and gripping to the hair really well, it's faster. So we spend all this time as, as colorists uh, folding over our comb and you know folding into parcels. And the reason we do that is A, to get closer to the roots, but B, to help keep the tinfoil or plastic in the hair. So with something that grips automatically, it makes that process a lot quicker. So for me, sustainability and holistic hairdressing means that I wanna be able to look after our bodies as well. Right. Um, I can reduce the amount of time that we stand there and apply foil would be so much easier for us. Um, and coming with that, as you can probably see in the back of the the, we, the picture there, um, behind the PowerPoint, it's really creative. I often uh, talk about it as being origami. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can cut paper into any size you like. It comes in a strip that is a very long size. I believe it's one of the longest lengths on the market. So amazing for balayage and our long hair work that we're doing at the moment. But also when I produced it, I was really um, not sure what length people would like. So mm -hmm. I basically thought, well, it's very easy to prepare. You can cut it in half, the medium um, length or, or shorter length or shorter retouches. Mm -hmm. And of course you can cut it even smaller if you're trying to get to those tiny little um, fine hairs or short, short haircuts. So it's really versatile to be able to, to be cut, you know, and um, changed into whatever shape you like. We have some amazing little techniques actually, which I'm sure Rebecca and I will work on to share with you at some point too, um, and how to use paper in creative ways. Yeah, and we loved um, when you were sharing with us around the hairline, you know, doing sort of angles you know, cutting them um, with the angle or the diagonal back so that you can get them right in the hairline around the face. And so we've been doing a lot of that. And of course, you know, all the other creative um, things that we'll be bringing as far as techniques this year using the paper, not foil in our classes too. So definitely so many, um, you know, and like you said, origami, but the fact that they are good for all types of techniques, such as this open hair picture on the right, we've been finding that that's a uh, a beautiful way to keep, you know, because sometimes you want to have the foils, but it's an open air, so you don't want all that. You want to be able to see them and pull them out easily. And then, of course, this other um, where you're talking about the no folding. I see people spending, especially a lot of our assistants, they spend, you know, 20, 30 minutes just folding, and then they have to re-weave uh, and so forth. But these are so quick and easy to put in the hair, and because of that grip factor, they're so different from the original true paper um, things that came out that that weren't as biodegradable or as clean. So um, here we've got just the, you know, the basic sectioning and the positioning and the placement that you can run through with us. I'll just kind of click through for you as we go. Um, and of course, this is, our, we'll start with the section type of work. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you can use paper exactly how you normally would when you foil here. I know everybody has um, a different way of, of applying foils. Mm -hmm. So this is a, our classic section where you would just do two sections and apply whether you want to weave or slice from mm -hmm. nape and, and, and moving up. Uh, one thing I get asked a lot is how do I um, get the hair to sit on an angle, you know, rather than being horizontal, like more vertically. And that's what Rebecca and I were talking about. If you can see this picture that's on your screen at the moment, at the top where the paper is sitting flush to the scalp in that foil picture. If you imagine cutting that corner off, you have mm -hmm. a vertical foil. So it's really easy, um, like we were saying, to adjust um, the cut of paper to fit the hairline or the, or the different placement that you want to apply. Once you've, once you've placed your paper onto the part line that you want to foil, simply leave it rest the hair down or lever the hair onto the paper and keep it there. Grab your paintbrush or your tint brush, sorry, paintbrush. <laughs> I Same always way. call it painting. I've, I've done right. it. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then paint. And of course, like we talked about before, once you pop the colour 
onto the paper and the hair, it just grips. You can actually remove your hands and it's not going to go anywhere, which means at this point, you can either fold the bottom up and fold it in half, or if you've got a lot of microfoils um, or back-to-back -back foils, you know, we're putting in hundreds at this point. Mm -hmm. My favorite way to do that is to just place one on top of the other. So we, we may not have a full length of paper. We might cut it in half, which means that all we're doing is basically clapping together, which is so fast, you know, and it means that we can um, complete a whole head of microfoils very quickly. And then we process, of course, and that's going to always determine, you know, be determined by the typical manufacturer's instructions. So it's not even like you need extra processing time to get you the clean lift. They are, they do have that thermal um, piece to them, so um, the natural thermal properties, and so they're going to process as normal. So that's quite easy. Nothing wild there and then and then tell us about removing them which I noticed was a really cool because you actually do s feel that chalky grip but they do slide out easily but you can feel a little grip versus the old paper that came out a long time ago and this is that this being so improved yeah we we have a lot of feedback um which is something which is probably sounds a bit terrible but in the early days of um developing paper I, of course, thought about the client, but I didn't feel think about the client um, in this way. So a lot of our consumers who sit in our chair will often say, gosh, that's so much nicer to have taken, taken out. It doesn't uh, snag on one piece of hair. It's, you're not fiddling trying to open up those parcels and check and pull them out. They just simply slide out. So there's two things that you can do. You can either pop your client up and pull them out um, without applying water. Or of course you can just pop the tap on and put some water onto the hair and, and they will slide out as well. Um, really easy to remove. And then here's where you were talking about putting them around the hairline when I met up with you in Italy. Um, so tell us some techniques and tips that you found because you've been using them the longest obviously. Yeah, I think the biggest tip for me is, and I probably should have said this Rebecca when we were looking at the application, but when you hold paper not foil in your hand, mm -hmm. I really want you to hold it towards the top of the paper. So you've got con full control. When you grab the paper, your fingers are sitting at the top of it and you can place it correctly onto the hairline. There's no drag, if that right. makes sense, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's probably the best way to put it into the hair is keep your finger and thumb at the top of the paper and place it onto the hairline. My next tip would be to only use the length that you need. Um, you can see in our picture, the length's really long, which is awesome for long hair. But if you're dealing with little regrowth or medium to short hair, cut it in half or cut it into three. It's much easier to work with. You don't have all of that paper or the same as tinfoil flapping around. It's mm -hmm. just nice and, com nice and compact. And my next tip is definitely, as you can see with that long hair, uh, foil on the side. Mm -hmm. um, if you imagine again cutting that corner off, everything sits nice and flush. So it stops the paper from falling into the client's face or um, getting in the way, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing too, when, um, when you're discussing having your finger and thumb at the top, when you know how we always put our foil in the foil in the actual foils bend it down and all of this all of that you don't need all of that anymore because the thickness is quite good the, the chalk residue keeps the once you've generously applied the product to let's say a millimeter underneath um, the top of the paper when you bring down let's say your slice or your uh, weave it you allow the hair to seam so you using that tension at the top will hold it in place as well until you can get your product on there so um i found that that helped me a little bit too not so many pieces and parts when you're going from bowl to foil and back sometimes you start slipping down and if you hold at the top you don't get that at all with this product which you do sometimes with foil yeah, and it's an amazing thing to watch. Like I, I wish I could watch all of you when you start to, to apply paper to the hair because it's so cool to see people say, oh my gosh, it just sticks. 
I don't have to do anything. It's like, no, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, as a colorist, if I can save you time and I can give you a more environmental choice, then I've won. <laughs> yes, we all have, haven't we? And I think that it'd be cool if some people, as they start to use this product, as they start to get it into their salons, if they do a little cute video and and put it up on Insta or Facebook, and we can see that, and you'll be able to see them all and and their, you know, all the revelations of wow, this is such a cool product and easy to use. So um, let let's get into some of the care and maintenance, which makes it so different um, as far as. You know, we've now put it in. Of course, we're ready to rinse our client's hair out and we get into now what do we do when we want to reuse it and do the eco method? Yeah, it's funny. We have always given the choice of um, washing and reusing back to the stylist because, oh my gosh, I have so many amazing videos and photos from salons all over the world and how they dry it and how they wash it. But for me personally, easiest way to conquer reusing or washing the hair is um, everybody's salon's different you know we sometimes we only have a couple of us in a salon sometimes we have 10 so having a bucket of water beside your basin that you can take the paper out of the hair pop it mm -hmm. into that bucket of water so it's just soaking uh, mm -hmm. all day until until you're ready to wash you know because we always um, have those busy times where we can't put anything in the washing machine <laughs> mm -hmm, um, true and it just helps to soak off that residue once that's been done you place them into the into the um, washing machine with a couple of towels the only reason you have a couple of towels in there is just to break them up so yeah. prefer preferably we want to make sure that the paper is unfolded before it goes into the washing machine otherwise you know it, little bits of color can still get caught in there mm -hmm. but also if you are a small salon or you're just doing a few partial foils, not a full head of foils, sometimes it's just easier to give them a bit of a rinse at the basin, pat them dry, hang them over something to, to dry, sorry, and then away you go. So this is great. This is obviously a salon that has a bit of space where they've got a clothesline that they can put paper on. Mm -hmm. In our salon, one of the easiest things that we do is we have a piece of string on our wall, like a clothesline. Mm -hmm. And we pull them out of the washing machine, we clip them together with a peg, so they might be, say, 15 to 1 peg, hanging up, and they just dry during the day. Some salons love to just leave them in a basket to dry naturally in a washing cane basket, and it, it might sit in the salon overnight, but by the time they get there in the morning, it's all dried. So wow. it really depends on your space. I really um, don't I guess I don't want to make this complicated for you it really isn't it's just leave them to dry naturally pop them on a line put them outside with a lid on the um the cane basket for a few hours or the other thing you can do um and I don't do this really at all and I think I'm not doing this because of the energy consumption maybe but some people if they're really busy will pop them into the into sorry into the dryer for just five to ten minutes on a meet, on a warm to cool air, mm -hmm. and they're done. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So it's a we real have done them. We have played with these all different ways, and they do. It's they're super easy. I mean, and you know, if some people have assistance, some don't. So it just depends on what your day looks like. But the fact that you can reuse them, and it's so easy. Um, whether you have a washing machine or if you're just at your back basin, it truly is easy. And having something that you're, you know, most of the people on this panel today are holistic hairdressers. So thinking about the client and the and the world and the earth and everything around them um, all the time. So your clients really get into this too. Once they see what you're doing, you know, there's all kinds of, they know that you're always taking that next step in in um, looking out for the world and of course they just get into it so it's been a really cool experience at least for our salons here that have been playing with it for a little while before the launch so yeah and it, it it's interesting to hear someone's feedback on the proof of that because I know I get a lot of um, initial comments like oh it just sounds like hard work I'm like <laughs> actually if you are preparing foil so you're already making a fold in foil, you're cutting them, you're getting them into piles for the day. Um, it is actually easier than doing that as a prep. Right. So 
it's really comparative to the time that you would spend prepping foil, you know, unless you're buying pre-folded strips. Mm -hmm. um, it, does, it does not take long at all. And it's just one of those, I think it's a habit thing, you know, changes sometimes just habit that we get into. Sure. It doesn't take long. So we have um, all of the, the ways you can reuse, reduce, recycle, and compost, simply throw away if that's how you want to, um, because it is 100% degradable and it's not going to clog up our landfills, waterways. And so we've, um, we've now joined with this amazing um, product line to bring to North America that is the most eco-material paper. So um, I think that this has been such an exciting chance to work with you, um, but I, and you've covered everything. I think that what we'll do is do an, a little FAQ um, now so that we can get some of these questions on the side in our questions area answered. Um, so let's see uh, what we have first. So remind us what it's made of. Yeah, so me, Rebecca, or, or the clients? <laughs> well, I think you, because I'm seeing um, they're all kind of captured, so I don't really awesome. have a whole lot of questions yet. I mean, some of them are, are about how long they last um, and so forth, Perfect. so I know that we're going to go through this, but I wanted to see if everybody remembered, and, and you can share with us what, again, it's made of. So we'll kind of do a little review here. Yeah, cool. So the easiest way to explain it, because this is an awesome talking point for your clients, is it's made of stone, so it's made of, you know, um, recycled industrial waste from the construction industry with a biodegradable food resin, which is completely non-toxic. Okay, and then how many of these come in an actual pack that they can purchase from us? Yes, so each pack is two sizes. One is, uh, actually I won't say it, I will say it, but I think you guys work in different measurements. So it's 10 centimeters wide, there's 500 sheets in a pack, and in the large size, it's 13 centimeters wide, 500 in a pack. And both sizes come in 40 centimeters long or 15.7 <laughs> inches long. Which is great because not only are there 500 sheets in a pack, but there are actually so many more because if you're doing them where you're cutting them in half, you're obviously going to have double that. So when you're getting into some of the more creative applications and techniques, then of course you are getting into customizing this paper knot foil so you get so much more. So um, it definitely is customizable for any of this. And we'll be coming around um, the states and doing some online education of ideas and techniques for this creative. Um, but we definitely encourage, you know, to customize them and do all kinds of shape. I know in the back um, quadrants, we have started playing with sort of the curve of the head there. And so um, everything is, is very customizable for the head shape because not every a head is not square lit so we we're able to really get close up even closer and takes less time because we're not sitting there with a foil pack like you said and having to cut them in half already and so on but we can if we need to which we found we've got so many more out of a pack than just that 500 obviously yeah you're absolutely right like i my favorite length is in half like directly cut in half um yeah. and when you look at that that's a thousand sheets but also if you just reuse that twice you know you're saving money and you're, you're actually um, receiving, so in one pack, it's equivalent to like 200 meters of tinfoil. Wow. So if you, if you reuse that twice, you know, that's 400, three times, that's 600 for that, that price. But also- That's just jaw dropping. Using, yeah, the amount of paper that you get out of that. And also too, guys, I wanted to touch on something that is really important as well. Um, we do have a, a huge clientele that, potentially don't want to reuse it you know they sometimes don't have a washing machine they might use biodegradable towels and and that sort of um thing so a lot of our salons that wish to only use it once will also do what they call like an on charge to their their clients and this is just a personal preference but i wanted to bring it up because once the client sees the difference in what you're doing, they have no problem and to pay that what we call an eco fee <laughs> to have this used on their hair because they know that when it is being disposed of, that it is completely safe. 
Yeah, that's huge too. And I know a lot of our green circle salons are doing the same thing, but this is a good point because the people that we attract in our uh, salons are definitely this type of customer that's wanting to know, wanting to ask what you're using. And then they see you bringing out foil. And a lot of times that's sort of, it's not quite in the whole alignment with the mission of, you know, using healthier color products on their hair and then, you know, bringing out the tinfoil. So this is such a unique difference that our salons are bringing, you know, to each of their areas and, you know, adding this as a, a part to their services. It's just super cool. And the clients so get into it. So they have no problem. Yeah, doing that right. with either. So. And of course so, you can use paper knot foil exactly like any other way of foiling, which is great. And you can do it into packs. You can, like you said, sandwich it. So you're not, you know, you're still at the same fast pace that you're used to working in. And um, once again, you can even add different techniques now. So being more creative with and without having to spend a lot more time. And then, of course, um, the fact that how many times you can reuse it. You mentioned three. Um, but I yes. think that, you know, we've known people to use it more and more. What about after um, fashion colors, Amanda? Yeah, I... I do get a bit of feedback that if you're, say, using reds or blue black or something like that, you will you will get stainage because it's naturally white. You know, it's going to pick up the the um, the pigment. But what I often say is put those papers away for those clients that have reds or blacks or darker colours, mm -hmm. and reuse them on those clients. You know that they've been washed. They've been absolutely you know it's hygienic to reuse again, um, but unfortunately they do get a bit stained. Or some of our salons will dispose of um, the ones that get stained and just keep the ones that don't. It's a okay. real personal preference. Yeah, and you got so many in a pack if you had to throw out a few. I mean, it's still eco and safe, so that's cool too. Um, but what about what about when you're foiling and, and we are worried about bleed marks and slippage and so forth? We talked about slippage, but what about bleed marks? Yeah, so I do get this again. And what I have always said is, we always have those areas in the head that um, are prone to bleeding, right? Especially the crown, um, sometimes the nape and our temples. So paper knot foil will not slip any more than what tin foil would. But what I do encourage is, Becky, you might be able to help me with this. We call them dinky clips, but they are like a setting clip. Um, mm -hmm. They're really, like they're really little, they're only... Like a yeah, tiny. Yes, that's it, yep. Okay. So I, I will often encourage in the temple or at the crown. Now I'm talking one or two foils here, not, not every odd foil. Once you get to that crown area, especially if you're doing a full head of microfoils, I sometimes put the setting clip um, on each side of the paper in one particular area, just in that crown, which means that every other foil that comes over that or sits on those, those clips that are tightly in will act almost like a bit of a lever so it holds the top it stops everything from dragging and it to me it's just um a safety net but i used to do that with tin foil as well mm -hmm. yeah. I, I knew i had a hundred foils on top that were pressing very hard on my crown so i used to just dinky them so that they would stay there so that's a really good way if you're starting out with paper it gives you that insurance and, and stops you from thinking gosh what if it does slip you know Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think it's always it's always going to be one of those things that until you start to use it, then you get more comfortable. And of course, we minimise the the swelling in the hair uh, mm -hmm. in the packet as well. So sometimes, um, depending on bleaches, of course, because there are different consistencies of bleach now, I will always say to someone, maybe just stay off that hairline a little bit at the start, just till you're comfortable at what the um, result is. Sure, sure. And that's for anyone, yeah. of course, too. Um, so would you remove it just like any normal foil when you're taking them out of the hair? Yep, absolutely. But of course, it's a bit easier because you don't have to unravel. All you need to do is just simply pull it out or pop your um, water on and they'll completely slide out. So a lot more comfortable for the client. So, Becky, I was going to say something about... Um, the closer to the roots as well so okay. not having to fold over your foil and push in and fold up you'll see when you apply paper to the part line that you get really close and in fact um 
a lot of our clients give us feedback all the time that often they can get closer to the roots because there's no barrier there. There's no folding there or worry of moving the hair. Mm-hmm. So it, I think it's effective to get closer to the work, to the roots. Yes, it can be. And, and just that little trick around the hairline, I did, I, I, like you said, I did that with foils too. You know, if somebody's having that really fine temple zone, you know, and I'll just clip something just to be sure, especially if I've got that moving target client. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so then I think we, I mentioned this earlier about the staining and, you know, talked about fashion colors, but, you know, you're, we already covered this, but even, even then when you're rinsing it, um, the fact that you've rinsed them so well and you're starting at the base and without having to yank them all out and you're gently pulling them, this is also starting to rinse at the same time. So you're double, you're rinsing and you're pulling them at the same time. So you're actually kind of t- making less time than typical. You know, when, when you think about the fact that you're rinsing these papers off to reuse possibly another few times, you know, you're doing it at the same time, really, laying them on your back bar. So what about processing times with the paper, not foil? Yes, yeah, so, so there'll be no, no difference. It doesn't alter your processing time. I know we talked about um, the lift and the heat component. It's absolutely mm-hmm. fine. Um, and again, you can still, if you wish to, pop that gentle heat on to increase depending on your manufacturer's instructions. But mm-hmm. exactly the same. Okay. And then I think we're getting close to the end, but I wanted to one more time um, discuss the slip during the application process and if there's any tips and tricks um, around that. Yeah, so when the hair is dry, of course, and you're putting in a full head of foils, no different. You know, you won't see any slip. Um, If you're worried about it, just use those little dinky clips to make sure that you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I do actually have a little bit of a tip for you. And please um, excuse because this is what we, uh, I guess, do in New Zealand. And it's something I have worked or done for a long time. When we're doing retouches and foils at the same time, which is really common application, um, depending on what shade you're using or the merge of colours, I suppose, or the blending of colours, my favourite way to use paper with retouches is to apply a retouch and then apply my foils. The reason I do that, if you think about um, how paper sticks to the hair mm-hmm. and how it sticks to colour really well, if you've got a retouch on and say you're doing copper foils or you know even lightener foils, as soon as paper hits that retouch colour that's sitting on the on the hair, it'll grip. So it reduces that slip straight away. Whereas nice. I know and over the years when you've done a full head of foils, then you come back in and you want to do that retouch. Even mm-hmm. with tinfoil it's so fiddly. You know, you're lifting foils up and you're trying to get in the air, especially if it's grey coverage. So for me it eliminates all of that and it's a much faster application. Um, and I, I feel like I have more control, to be honest, but that's just a tip for me. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. different, but give it a go. It's a beautiful, a beautiful way to blend color as well. Everybody asks that too. So thank you for touching yeah. base on that. <laughs> so then talking about the grip and then lastly, um, is, should there be a specific temperature? Does that matter when you're rinsing these or putting them in your washing machine? No, not at all. I, again, I would really just recommend cold. Um, okay. And also too, when we talked about stain and, and uh, washing paper, not foil, if you have it in a little bit of water during the day, you know, it, it's already starting to soak that colour off. So mm-hmm. um, it's there's less to do. So I would only be putting that on a short wash and a, and a gentle wash is all it okay. means. I like the bucket idea because, you know, a lot of times when I first started with these, I was rinsing so much and it didn't even need that, but I was over overdoing it, you know, overthinking it. And then I thought, oh, the water. But when I ha- when I did the bucket technique, like you mentioned, it was so easy just to quick slip them out and um, dry them off and then keep going. You know, and so you have so many other sheets that are clean and dry and ready that I, it never was a problem. And it was just um, a super cool, you know, opportunity yeah. to have I, when I was concerned about the water, let's say. So thank you. Yeah, that tip. for sure. You get a little production line going. Yeah, <laughs> and you get so used to it too. Yeah, <laughs> and please yell out. Like, I'd love to see the way that you're using paper and any questions over and above this. You know, I'm so more than happy to help. I'm so excited for you all. 
Yes, and we are so excited to have it now as a part of our offerings to healthier products for all the beauty industry out there. So um, I think that everybody that has um, joined us today um, have some questions. So I'm going to see if I can't jump over into the questions box here and see what else we have going on. Um, let's see. Tina Harrison's asking, will they work when doing tint between the papers? So I know you answered that, but maybe you could revisit that for Tina just to make sure she's got her question answered. Amanda? Yeah, absolutely. So Tina, um, either way, hun, like you can pop your foils in and do your retouch um, after your foil. But as I explained, I love to do my retouch first and then apply my foil simply because when I've got colour on the roots and then I've placed my foil in, my paper, it mm -hmm. sticks to me. So it's, it's a lot faster. Um, but have a play, but just a, a good wee tip. But it works perfectly either way. Great. And then um, let's see, Josephine wants, this is a cool one too, I didn't even think of um, asking, but will they stick together if you wash um, not, but if you sit them out to dry later, do they stick together? Good question, Justine. So, um, no, a little bit. I guess mm -hmm. it depends how many are sitting in a pile. You know, if it's really compact and they're drying all together. But, but I think generally what happens is when you're pulling them out of being rinsed, they're kind of separated anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I, for some reason that the oxygen kind of gets between them and they just dry individually. But Absolutely, I can see how they could stick together sometimes, but it, they will dry even if they're stuck together. So sometimes it might be that someone just sort of gives them a bit of a shuffle. Um, and I wanted to actually, good, great question, I wanted to touch on this. Paper won't stay 100% flat when it's washed. What I mean is it'll crinkle a little bit, um, it'll get worn. Of course, it's, it's designed to break down, so it'll start to soften and, and get a bit worn out as time goes on but it has no implication to that application or result. Even though it's a little bit crinkled or it might have a, a wee bend in it or something, it still um, can be colored with perfectly. Okay, that's a good point. Um, she's also mentioning, um, you know, then can you just wash later? Do you need to wash them right away when you pulled them out or can they sit for a second? You know, maybe you have a back-to-back -back client. Yeah, absolutely, just pop them in your bucket and let them soak until you're ready. Like some of our salons sometimes say to me, oh gosh, I forget about them and they've been in the bucket for three days. Mm. <laughs> yeah. so it's absolutely fine, whatever suits you. Uh, let's see, so then Lynn is asking, um, may have missed this part yet, do they stain from oxidized color or direct dyes or both? I would say oxidized color on a level four and darker. Uh -huh. You'll get some stainage and and direct dye, I, I would say yes, because, you know, depending on whether it's green or blue or, you know, mm -hmm. it'll, it will leave a residue. But like I said, pop them aside, use them again for those particular um, color, colors, you know, where mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend using a stained red on a blonde, just in case. Yeah. Um, or, <laughs> or sometimes, honestly, I just throw them away if they're too stained because yeah. remember that there's no detriment by doing that. Right. So you've, we're covered either way. Um, yeah. Liz has a great question too I didn't even think of, but basically can the, the paper nut foil also work with conventional products or just organic? Hi Liz, absolutely any color range. So when we, when we were um, developing paper nut foil, that was ideally what we wanted was to help every color range or every salon to be able to use it. So it works with everything. But of course, I love that we not only look after the environment with the tools that we use, but of course our color ranges, you know, to be a bit more natural is perfect. Right, exactly. Um, you know, especially being part of this holistic tribe, that's what we love about it. But, and that's why we've brought it here at Simply Organic Beauty um, on. But yes, it does work with any color that you happen to be working with. Hopefully you'll come over to the other side though with organic. Um, <laughs> now, someone's asking how it gets recycled. Um, so I know you're in New Zealand, it's probably different there for you. Um, 
you know, and of course here it's different everywhere in the United States and uh, North America as well. So um, I would, the way we do it in my salon, we rinse them if um, we don't even need to, I suppose, but we put them in a recycle bin and we have a pickup actually. Um, do you have a dif different way over in New Zealand that you have recycling? That's pretty much the same. So we yeah. also have a um, like green salons uh, mm -hmm. in New Zealand, but every every township, I suppose, we have recycling bins on the street. Do you have mm -hmm. that? Yes, we do so here that, in yeah. Florida, at least, and I know they're trying to bring in other areas as well. Yeah, cool. So your classic number two, which is why it goes into the number two recycling. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Rebecca, I'm not sure if it's international for you guys. Right. Um, but it's processing recycling plant number two. It is the most common recycling process done um, in the world. So putting it into that particular number two recycling process means that you know it is going to get recycled. There's other recycling processes throughout the world. Some have number five, some have number seven. They're not common. So often in each state, those particular recycling processes won't be picked up. So we place it in the general recycling number two knowing that if you choose to recycle it it'll get done right that is the most important because we have the same type of thing here number two so perfect yeah. um i have alex nixon asking um saying let's see i use plastic wrap on balayage a lot i lay the plastic wrap on top of my balayage pieces of hair is paper knot foil sticky enough to lay on top of the balayage Absolutely. <laughs> so yep. good, really good question, Alex. Um, we have a lot of salons that love it for what we call guarding. So they might use it, whether it's a straightening product or a relaxing product, they'll use it to hold the head out and of course to guard color. So whether or not you wanted to place just one piece in a certain area of the head over your balayage or essentially blocking, you know, a dark color from a light color, as soon as you pop it onto the color or onto the hair that has color on it, it'll completely grip. Perfect. Um, and we use them a lot in the balayage classes that we've been teaching recently too. And so anyone that's coming to a live event, you will get to see these in all of our classes as well um, with Simply Organic Beauty. So uh, let's see. So that answered Lynn, I believe. And then we've got also, I like to foil on wet hair. Will this affect the paper knot foil staying in the hair as it gets wet? Which I think you kind of answered, um, but if you want to say that one more time for Lynn, that would be great. That's a cool technique, Lynn. Um, actually, you know what? You're going to love this. <laughs> because you've already got moisture on the hair, um, paper will stick to moisture. So again, because it's wet, um, as soon as you touch it, it'll grip. So it'll make life even more easier for you, really. Mm hmm and then this kind of follows through um, again too, but Josephine goes back to, so if you're using heat to process, can they easily be covered with plastic wrap to keep the color from drying out without slipping? And I don't see that you wouldn't even need the plastic wrap at this point. So maybe you want to touch again about the heat because there's another question about heat. Um, um, but that kind of covers where they're trying to use plastic wrap and the paper knot foil. Yeah. So. I've just got my creative head on here. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you didn't have a color at the roots, then you wouldn't need plastic wrap at all, you know, because the paper's going to combust the heat as, it, as it's processing. If you have a retouch on, and this is what I'm thinking is why we would put the plastic wrap on to mm -hmm. stop it from drying out, I would essentially use paper to wrap the head. Now, not, not because you can wrap the whole head in one sheet of paper, but you might place a piece of paper on top where that retouches so that mm -hmm. it guards from the heat and just clip it onto another piece of paper, if that makes sense, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. It sure does. So, yeah, so that you're, again, maybe we can eliminate using plastic wrap, but also um, the only time I would imagine you would want to do that is just to guard the retouch color from drying out. Very cool. Um, this one I'm... I'm going to let you handle because I'm not, I want to make sure I don't answer incorrectly. We've got one from Raven. Um, she says that she's concerned that mixing them with paper recycling may be a problem as they are stone, not wood. Degrading them in a landfill or compost seems a better option. What are your thoughts there? 
yeah okay cool so you are completely right um so putting them into the landfill or the compost amazing because we're not going through a recycling process that also uses um quite high carbon emissions so when i say that if you think about the pickups and the drop-offs and the petroleum that's used and then the ship that gets put on to be processed and all of that type of thing is, is what I completely think about all the time. Then of course, if we can um, pop it into the landfill or compost, amazing. But if we pop it into the recycling bin, most recycling centres will always go through recycling. Um, very little does it go into a process and they don't sort it. So calcium carbonate can be mixed with plastic, it can be mixed with all of number two agents within um, the recycling bin. And that's another reason why we do it. Often chalk or calcium carbonate is a filler for different papers, different um, ceramics and also plastics. So okay. it will always be recycled no matter what happens in that number two stream. And that, that okay. is why we put it into the number two stream, not a paper stream, not a plastic stream. Um, and I'm, I know it's probably different there, but I, I'm hoping that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I, I think we're going to get a lot of questions about that. So we'll do some, we've got some techs on support here that we'll find out a little bit more so that everyone gets that. And of course, when you order, there is an entire um, page as well that you're going to be getting in your quick start guide that can help um, all of our users to recycle, compost, and all of those opportunities. And of course, they can always reach out to one of us um, and we'll get that information to them for their area. So if they have any questions there further, we can uh, certainly re revisit that with each um, customer anyway. Yeah, and of course each state of, um, you know, when I look at New Zealand and Australia, mm -hmm. we're the same. Each each council or each uh, rubbish area, I suppose, has a different way of, of doing things. So right. it could be that we, uh, we understand the state as well, you know? Right, exactly. So we'll hook that way too, but the fact that we can do all of those and reuse, compost, recycle, any of those, it's just a completely unique product. And we're so thankful to that you brought this to market and that you're sharing that with Simply Organic Beauty and all of us here in North America. So thanks for being one of our pioneers and um, looking out for the earth and our, ourselves in this beauty world that we live in. So thank you, Amanda. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for adapting to our product and I'm so excited to see how you all go and and again please share so I can watch <laughs> absolutely Instagram Facebook we're gonna have some links on the back end of this uh, program today but we did want anybody that was live today thank you so much um, thank you Amanda for being up so early and sharing with us and uh, for anyone that was live we wanted to go ahead and reward you with an opportunity for some trivia away and giveaway so We'll have two lucky winners of Paper Knot Foil, a full 500 um, sheet box. So you'll get to choose your size. What we're going to ask you to do is when uh, we have two questions, we're going to throw out here in just a second. So what you'll do is you'll put your answer in the side questions box after. And the first one that we see, we will pop up and your account manager will follow up with you and get you out a Paper Knot Foil box of 500 sheets and you get to pick your size. So. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So what is paper not foil made of? All right, we've got the first one that came up, calcium <laughs> carbonate. Would you say that's correct, Amanda? Absolutely, well done. All right, Josephine yes, Jones, <laughs> you will be getting a box of paper knot foil. You get to pick your size, so um, I, I will look to speak with you in just a few minutes after we conclude this presentation. So congratulations. We did have quite a few people that also um, were answering quickly on there. So let's see. Now, this is your question, Amanda. Your oh. turn. Oh. Yep. Think of something okay. good. Whoops. <laughs> your turn. All right. What are three ways of disposing of paper knot foil? All right. Let's see who comes up. Three. We are looking. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have said one. We've got eh? ground. <laughs> oh, 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 hold on. We've got recycle, compost, or trash. Awesome. 
All right. Oh, we've got at this. We both had them. We also have reuse. So we've got. Let's see. La, 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 la. So yes, I mean, I, I'm trying to read this. Sorry, my computer's <laughs> glitching. I've got Eleni Raptis as the winner there. So. Elaney, you're going to hear from your account manager here in the next, as we conclude today's Paper Not Foil Launch and Learn. So, Well, it's so good. Thank you for listening. Yes, thanks everyone for joining us today on your Monday. I know that it's a, always a great time to learn because a lot of times we are not in the salon on Mondays, but so many of you are. So everyone, thank you for sharing your time. Everyone is so busy and we're coming up in fourth quarter at the very busy time of the holiday year. So I'm excited that all of you joined us, took the time out to learn about this revolutionary, unique line and um, from the pioneer herself, Amanda. So. Thank you, Amanda, for joining us. We have um, here on the screen for you, anyone that wants to order this, go ahead and call in or follow up with your account managers. We'll provide you tech support, ideas, unique opportunities, and of course, ask about education because we're traveling around North America constantly. I usually am done with education travel at this point in the year, but we still have some great times um, scheduled through November even. And then the 2020 calendar is just about out. So your account managers will be able to share with you all the places in North America that we'll be hitting and we will have paper not foil with us at the classes. So you'll get to play with them live, play with them in your salons now and get a jump start and um, join us um, next time. So call us for any questions you may have. We have the number on the screen now, it's 888-888. 213-4744 and we are at Simply Organic Beauty always trying to share new beauty tips and holistic approaches to our industry so thank you everyone for being a part of this and for doing your part in um, making this industry just a much better place to be and happy coloring to all of you and we'll be on the line here for a few more minutes looking for additional questions so if you have them please share them see you soon <laughs>